All right, so yes, a lot going on around Diablo 4 today. We've got some brand new updates that just rolled out and Blizzard did reply about some key issues that they're looking into currently for season four. And yes, Blizzard also got called out for making a change that a lot of players do not like. They did respond about that one and it deals with the economy for this game. We'll dive into that. And yes, we're gonna go over some tips and someone found a crazy Uber. You gotta see this. And of course, your top comments, remember to leave a comment down below. It could end up right here in a future video. But you know what? Check this out right here. So yes, finally an open world game that embraces a supernatural theme with weirdly wonderful monster and creature designs, crazy tough bosses that test your skills, and ultimately dishes out amazing rewards and more. Yes, this is Once Human, and it's currently in beta right now. I've been playing it quite a bit, and get this, once Human is sitting at number 12 on the Steam wishlist charts, so be sure to wishlist it right now on Steam by following the link in the description below and sign up to the beta at oncehuman.game. And let me tell you what, the dev team creating this game have been hard at work crafting an open world full of mystery, adding all sorts of amazing new features, including Deviants, which are similar to Pals from Pal World, but think Horror Pals, this time around. There's a deviant for every use from combat to helping you farm resources and they can even heal you in battle. But that's just only some of the features Once Human has to offer because this game has a lot. We're talking about an extensive RPG and progression system, weapons you can craft with crazy modifiers like this MP5 here, check out how the bullets can spread from one enemy to another, and yes, you've even got an entire base building experience and you could do all of this with a group of friends or hey, make new friends along the way and form a clan. So again, join me on my adventure in Once Human. Wishlist it right now on Steam by following that link in the description below or sign up to the beta at oncehuman.game. Check it out. All right, as always, let's start with the official stuff here. We've got an update from Adam Fletcher of Blizzard who says a late night for the Diablo 4 crew. The team is currently rolling out a hot fix right now which will take a few hours to hit every player. No restart is required, which means a lot of you already have this update in place. Now, this hotfix does address the missing unique items from the boss ladder, Azur Wrath's not dropping for rogues, Necromancers on Echo of Andrel Duriel, and the first of two fixes for some legacy gear effects issues. We're gonna go over all those notes, but some people are not happy about some of the things that have been changed for season four. In fact, they called out Blizzard. Check it out. Julian says this, thank you for the update and the team for the effort. Much appreciated. Hopefully gold economy will be adjusted soon and also the drop rates on some materials because they're limiting the engagement with in-game content and the new systems. Then we have Vandalorian who says they're doing it on purpose to bottleneck everyone. It's literally making the game unfun. I guarantee you this was Rod work since I did full stop. Now it says, in the past, leveling took so long because there was no in-game in order to obtain longer in-game time metrics. But now that people voluntarily spend more time in-game because they enjoy it, it doesn't make sense to slow us down. People will most likely do more than one character anyway. Here is the response from Adam Fletcher, who says the team is having some internal chats about the gold and prism items we've been seeing. And there's been a lot of complaints. Well, not a lot some complaints about prisms and gold how it's currently working uh, right now and it looks like the team is wanting to perhaps adjust this in a future update hopefully i could, could perhaps roll that out soon i guess they're gauging the response from the community but how are you guys feeling about prisms and gold currently sound off now yes a new patch did roll out here we have the patch notes right here says user interface and user experience. NVIDIA DLSS frame generation, a setting available to players with NVIDIA 40 series graphics cards has been temporarily disabled due to stability issues. So if you're wondering where that option went, it'll be back eventually. Now also there's some bug issues uh, where Evade didn't function properly for players using full keyboard controls and then various updates to performance and stability issues as well. Now we did have that hot fix. Let's dive into a little bit more about that as well. Got some bug fixes where they uh, fix an issue where certain unique items could not be dropped by in-game bosses. They also fix that issue where Azur Wrath was not dropping for rogues and necromasters, but only for barbarians from fighting the Echoes of Andrel. Now, developer note here, we'll have another upcoming fix that will address missing Azur 
Wraths in player inventories on the Eternal Realm, Azur Wrath needs to chill. Now they also address an issue where legacy equipment on Eternal characters could have re-rolled their effects after Season of Loot Reborn went live. We also have a developer's note here. This fix will prevent this from happening for players logging into the game for the first time after the season went live. We still have another upcoming update that will provide a fix for re-rolled fixes already affected by this bug. So yeah, you can see they're putting some time into addressing all of this. Now, we also have some things that they are currently looking into. Right here, we have Adam Fletcher saying, thanks to everyone for jumping into season four. We have been behind the scenes reading through the comment sand posts and wanted to provide an update on some of the larger items we are tracking here. Let's take a look at the actual post and dive into this a bit more. Heading on over to Blizzard, it says missing resplendent sparks on Eternal Realm. As you can see from the thread, the team is working on an issue regarding resplendent sparks not appearing on some Eternal Realm characters. It is some because the team applied a hot fix the other day to stop this from occurring on any new player that logged in for the first time in season four. We'll have a solution to share in the coming days for all players that are missing resplendent sparks from this issue. And then there's some issues with the resplendent sparks on the first Echo of Lilith kill that they are aware of. They're investigating this as well. They're doing some uh, confirmations and testing and they will give some more findings soon. Legacy gear was modified at the start of this season as well. So we replied back to this issue the other day that we were investigating these reports and we have found a bug with legacy gear. We are looking to stop this occurring in our next hot, hot fix, excuse me, in the next 24 hours. And we will follow up with a separate hot fix that will fix any gear that was affected by this. And yeah, look at this. It says update. This has been partially addressed in hot fix one. We'll have another hot fix to correct any gear that was affected by this bug in the coming weeks. And of course, we did go over this about the rogues and necromancers that cannot equip Azur Wrath. They have a fix as well. And then Azur Wrath missing from some eternal players inventories. And they're going to be looking into that as well. And apparently there's more issues as well on Xbox Series X. We're talking about performance issues while in Hell Tides and the invisible walls around the map. So Adam Fletcher says this. We know what the walls is and the team is working on it. It's due to the Hell Worms coming up and sometimes leaving collision after death. So look out for a fix if that is really annoying you right now. And camera distance. Let's talk about it. We have camera distance setting cannot be saved on PS5. I have to change it too far every time I play, which is very annoying. And they are aware of this as a bug on consoles currently. Seems like it also perhaps exists on Xbox and they are going to be fixing that one, it looks like. So yeah, if you're dealing with that, don't worry. They're gonna have that fixed down the road. Now let's get into some very important tips and tricks. First of all, PSA, temper your items first, then enchant it. You just got a great piece of 925 gear with two out of the three stats you want. You enchant it, and after spending a ton of resources, you finally nail the stat you want. Time to temper it, right? You roll a bunch of tempers, but don't get the one you want and are out of re-rolls. You now have an Iron Maiden temper and don't even use Iron Maiden. The item is bricked and you wasted all that money enchanting. Temper your items first, get the two tempers you want, then go for the enchant. If you fail the tempers, trash it and look for another item. You can always keep enchanting, tempers run out. Some excellent advice right there. But yeah, we also have some opinions on this one as well. Let me know your take though. Check it out right here. It says, that is a very sensible piece of advice, but I would like to add, I've seen a lot of posts on here with people referring to an item being bricked by tempering. It's not bricked as it will still be usable just as it was before you tempered it will just have a useless stat on it. Using the term bricked indicates it's now completely unusable, which won't be the case. So advising people to trash the item isn't good advice. Use the item if it's good, farm for a new one for tempering. And this stirred up a conversation. Let me tell you what it says, a useless stat bricks the item, my man. So yeah, your take on this one, do you think an item, a piece of gear, weapon becomes completely pointless uh, and you just get rid of it if it has one stat that is unusable, sound off, yeah, kind of curious about your take on that one. And then we also have this one. 
they made microtransactions cheaper, would they make a ton more of money? I don't know, but I'm not considering $25 for one set, but I wouldn't think twice about $5 drop for a set, maybe $7 for prestige, not even a second boom buy. They'd make way more money. Am I crazy? And we've got this theory right here, and I think this might be correct. It says they have teams for monetization. The few wells makes them more profit than making it cheaper and more accessible. And I think that is the reason why you're seeing these high prices. I would absolutely prefer it to be cheaper, but unfortunately, they're probably going to have some analytics in the back end saying, nope, we're going to cater to our wells on this one. Also, we have this one right here. Someone found the almost perfect first ever Uber. Look at this beautiful spear of Lycandor. Wow, this is absolutely impressive. Plus 52% damage, 20% attack speed, 24% critical strike chance, lucky hit, up to 42% chance to stun for two seconds, gain a random shrine effect for 20 seconds after killing an elite enemy can only occur once every 30 seconds. That one is wild and it has two sockets on it as well. So yeah, impressive find right there. Let me know what type of weapons you guys have been finding. If anything has popped out to you for season four or not, or if you feel like they need to actually look over the loot. But I think so far, I mean, in my opinion, they've done such a great rework with the loot system. Now, we also have your top comments. So let's get into your top comments right now, shall we? So let's go over them. Here we go. We have Big Dog Gang who says, we need more prism rates. Yeah, that's definitely been one of the big concerns. It seems like they are going to be adjusting that. Also, we have this one. I did the first capstone at 26 with Necro. Then I just went to World Tier 3 Health Tides. You could put on Sacreds at 35. Then you crush everything until World Tier 4. I'm actually having fun. So yeah, this is this to me is just awesome to see. This is where I wanted Diablo 4 to always be. I enjoyed, again, the campaign. And yeah, it just seemed like they had a rough launch when people really started getting into the in-game type content. And now it seems like we're in really, really a good place for future seasons. All right, next up we have Accessum Gaming who says, people forget you are not meant to play the game 24 seven. You come for the season pass, get the max level, finish season quest pass, reach top rankings in a few weeks, and then go play other games. If I would be forced to play nonstop, like in previous older seasons, I would quit now. And you know what? I've seen the dev team. They're fine with this idea of you playing other games. I've literally seen them say, hey, it's fine. Go play another game if you're bored until the next season. It's all good. You know, if you got, <laughs> you know, the full amount of content from this season, join us next time. So that's an interesting take from the dev team. And I think that's actually kind of refreshing. And I 100% agree with you that you don't have to spend 24 seven on one particular game. If you're happy with your progress and you call it a day, jump on to another game. There's plenty of other experiences uh, out there. But anyway, there it is. Thank you all so much for watching. Love all the comments. Looking forward to more. Uh, I'll keep you guys updated on changes happening with Diablo 4 in the future. Look out for that. And I will see you all next time. Take care.